President Trump, we will get to immigration uh, later in this block. President Biden, uh, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to this question about the national debt. He had the largest national debt of any president in a four-year period, number one. Number two, he got two trillion dollar tax cut benefited the very wealthy. I, what I'm going to do is fix the tax system. For example, we have a thousand trillionaires in America. I mean, billionaires in America. And what's happening? They're in a situation where they, in fact, pay 8.2 percent in taxes. If they just paid 24 percent, 25 percent, either one of those numbers, they'd raise 500 million dollars, billion dollars, I should say, in a 10-year period. We'd be able to right wipe out his debt. We'd be able to help make sure that all those things we need to do, child care, elder care, making sure that we continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person eligible for what I've been able to do with the, uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump? Well, he's right. He did beat Medicare. He beat it to death. And he's destroying Medicare because all of these people are coming in. They're putting them on Medicare. They're putting them on Social Security. They're going to destroy Social Security. This man is going to single-handedly destroy Social Security. These millions and millions of people coming in, they're trying to put them on Social Security. He will wipe out Social Security. He will wipe out Medicare. So he was right in the way he finished that sentence. And it's a shame. What's happened to our country in the last four years is not to be believed. Foreign countries, I'm friends with a lot of people, they cannot believe what happened to the United States of America. We're no longer respected. They, they don't like us. We give them everything they want, and they, they think we're stupid. They think we're very stupid people. What we're doing for other countries, and they do nothing for us, what this man has done is absolutely criminal. President Trump, um, staying on the topic of immigration, you've said that you're going to carry out, quote, the largest domestic deportation operation in American history, unquote. Does that mean that you will deport every undocumented immigrant in America, including those who have jobs, including those whose spouses are citizens, and including those who have lived here for decades? And if so, how will you do it? Uh, just one second. He said we killed three people. The people we killed are al-Baghdadi and Soleimani the two greatest terrorists, biggest terrorists anywhere in the world. And it had a huge impact on everything, not just border, on everything. He's the one that killed people with the bad water, including hundreds of thousands of people dying and also killing our citizens when they come in. We, ha we are living right now in a rat's nest. They're killing our people in New York, in California, in every state in the union, because we don't have borders anymore. Every state is now a border. And because of his ridiculous, insane, and very stupid policies, people are coming in and they're killing our citizens at a level that we've never seen. We call it migrant crime. I call it Biden migrant crime. They're killing our citizens at a level that we've never seen before. And you're reading it like these three incredible young girls over the last few days. One of them, I just spoke to the mother, and they just had the funeral for this girl, 12 years old. This is horrible, what's taken place. What's taken place in our country, we're literally an uncivilized country now. He doesn't want it to be. He just doesn't know. He opened the borders. Nobody's ever seen anything like. And we have to get a lot of these people out, and we have to get them out fast, because they're going to destroy our country. Just take a look at where they're living. They're living in luxury hotels in New York City and other places. Our veterans are on the street. They're dying because he doesn't care about our veterans. He doesn't care. He doesn't like the military at all. And he doesn't care about our veterans. Nobody been worse. I had the highest approval rating for veterans taking care of the VA. He has the worst. He's gotten rid of all the things that I approved. Joyce, that I got through Congress, all of the different things I approved, they abandoned. We had by far the highest, and now it's down in less than half because he's done all these great things that we did. And I think he did it just because I approved it, which is crazy. But he has killed so many people at our border by Thank allowing you, all of these people to come in. President and it's Biden, a very sad day in America. President Biden, you have the mic. Every single thing he said is a lie. Every single one. For example, veterans are a hell of a lot better off since I passed the PACT Act. One million of them now have insurance and their families have it. Their families have it because what happened, whether it was Agent Orange or burn pits, they're all being covered now. And he opposed his 
group, group opposed that. We're also in a situation where we have great respect for veterans. My, spent, my son spent a year in Iraq, living one next to one of those burn pits, came back with stage four glioblastoma. I was recently in, in, in uh, France for D-Day, and I spoke to all about those heroes that died. I went to the World War II cemetery, World War I cemetery he refused to go to. He was standing with his four-star general, and he told me, he said, I don't want to go in there because they're a bunch of losers and suckers. My son was not a loser, was not a sucker. You're the sucker. You're the loser. President Trump? Uh, first of all, that was a made-up quote, suckers and losers. They made it up. It was in a third-rate magazine that's failing, like many of these magazines. Uh, he made that up. He put it in commercials. We've notified him. We had 19 people that said I didn't say it. And think of this. Who would say I'm at a cemetery or I'm talking about our veterans? Because nobody's taking better care. I'm so glad this came up and he brought it up. There's nobody that's taken better care of our soldiers than I have. To think that I would, in front of generals and others, say suckers and losers. We have 19 people that said it was never said by me. It was made up by him, just like Russia, Russia, Russia was made up, just like the 51 intelligence agents are made up, just like the new thing with the 16 economists are talking. It's the same thing. 51 intelligence agents said that the laptop was Russia disinformation. It wasn't. That came from his son, Hunter. It wasn't Russia disinformation. He made up the suckers and losers, so he should apologize to me right now. Four-star general standing to your side who was on your staff who said you said it, period. That's number one. And number two, the idea, the idea that I have to apologize to you for anything along the line. We've done more for veterans than any president has in American history. American history. And they now are in their family. The only sacred obligation we have as a country is to care for our veterans when they come home and their families and equip them when they go to war. That's what we're doing. That's what the VA is doing now. They're doing more for veterans than ever before in our history. All right, thank you so much. Let's move to the topic of foreign policy. I want to begin with Russia's war against Ukraine, which is now in its third year. Former President Trump, Russian President Vladimir Putin says he'll only end this war if Russia keeps the Ukrainian territory it has already claimed and Ukraine abandons its bid to join NATO. Are Putin's terms acceptable to you? First of all, our veterans and our soldiers can't stand this guy. They can't stand him. They think he's the worst commander in chief, if that's what you call him, that we've ever had. They can't stand him. So let's get that straight. And they like me more than just about any of them. And that's based on every single bit of information. As far as Russia and Ukraine, if we had a real president, the president that knew, that was respected by Putin, he would have never, he would have never invaded Ukraine. A lot of people are dead right now, much more than people know. You know, they talk about numbers. You can double those numbers, maybe triple those numbers. He did nothing to stop it. In fact, I think he encouraged Russia from going in. I'll tell you what happened. He was so bad with Afghanistan. It was such a horrible embarrassment, most embarrassing moment in the history of our country, that when Putin watched that and he saw the incompetence that he should, he should have fired those generals, like I fired the one that you mentioned, and so he's got no love lost. But he should have fired those generals. No general got fired for the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country, Afghanistan, where we left billions of dollars of equipment behind. We lost 13 beautiful soldiers, and 38 soldiers were obliterated. And by the way, we left people behind, too. We left American citizens behind. When Putin saw that, he said, you know what? I think we're going to go in and maybe take my — this was his dream. I talked to him about it, his dream. The difference is he never would have invaded Ukraine. Never. Just like Israel would have never been invaded in a million years by Hamas. You know why? Because Iran was broke with me. I wouldn't let anybody do business with them. They ran out of money. They were broke. They had no money for Hamas. They had no money for anything. No money for terror. That's why you had no terror at all during my administration. This place, the whole world is blowing up under him. President Biden. I've never heard so much malarkey in my whole life. Look, the fact of the matter is that we're in a situation where, let's take the last point first. Iran attacked American troops, killed, or caused brain damage for a number of these troops, and he did nothing about it recently, not when he was president. There they attacked. He said they're just having headaches. That's all it is. He didn't do a thing when the attack took place, number one. Number two, 
we got over 100,000 Americans and others out of, of uh, Afghanistan during that airlift. Number three, we found ourselves in a situation where if you take a look at what Trump did in Ukraine, he's, this guy told Ukraine, told Trump, do whatever you want and do whatever you want. And that's exactly what Trump did to Putin, encourage him, do whatever you want. And he went in. And listen to what he said when he went in. He was going to take Kiev in five days, remember? Because it's part of the old Soviet Union. That's what he wanted to reestablish, Kiev. And he, in fact, didn't do it at all. He didn't, wasn't able to get it done. And they've lost over, they've lost thousands and thousands of troops, 500,000 troops. Former President Trump, Russian President Vladimir Putin says he'll only end this war if Russia keeps the Ukrainian territory it has already claimed and Ukraine abandons its bid to join NATO. Are Putin's terms acceptable to you? First of all, our veterans and our soldiers can't stand this guy. They can't stand him. They think he's the worst commander in chief, if that's what you call him, that we've ever had. They can't stand him. So let's get that straight. And they like me more than just about any of them. And that's based on every single bit of information. As far as Russia and Ukraine, if we had a real president, the president that knew, that was respected by Putin, he would have never, he would have never invaded Ukraine. A lot of people are dead right now, much more than people know. You know, they talk about numbers. You can double those numbers, maybe triple those numbers. He did nothing to stop it. In fact, I think he encouraged Russia from going in. I'll tell you what happened. He was so bad with Afghanistan. It was such a horrible embarrassment, most embarrassing moment in the history of our country, that when Putin watched that and he saw the incompetence, that he should, he should have fired those generals, like I fired the one that you mentioned, and so he's got no love lost, but he should have fired those generals. No general got fired for the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country, Afghanistan, where we left billions of dollars of equipment behind. We lost 13 beautiful soldiers, and 38 soldiers were obliterated. And by the way, we left people behind, too. We left American citizens behind. When Putin saw that, he said, you know what? I think we're going to go in and maybe take my — this was his dream. I talked to him about it, his dream. The difference is he never would have invaded Ukraine, never. Just like Israel would have never been invaded in a million years by Hamas. You know why? Because Iran was broke with me. I wouldn't let anybody do business with them. They ran out of money. They were broke. They had no money for Hamas. They had no money for anything. No money for terror. That's why you had no terror at all during my administration. This place, the whole world is blowing up under him. President Biden. Never heard so much malarkey in my whole life. Look, the fact of the matter is that we're in a situation where, let's take the last point first. Iran attacked American troops, killed or caused brain damage for a number of these troops, and he did nothing about it recently, not when he was president. They, they attacked. He said they're just having headaches. That's all it is. He didn't do a thing when the attack took place, number one. Number two, we got over 100,000 Americans and others out of, of uh, Afghanistan during that airlift. Number three, we found ourselves in a situation where if you take a look at what Trump did in Ukraine, he's, this guy told Ukraine, told Trump, do whatever you want and <clears throat> do whatever you want. And that's exactly what Trump did to Putin, encourage him, do whatever you want. And he went in. And listen to what he said when he went in. He was going to take Kiev in five days, remember? Because it's part of the old Soviet Union. That's what he wanted to reestablish. Kiev. And he, in fact, didn't do it at all. He didn't, wasn't able to get it done. And they've lost over, they've lost thousands and thousands of troops, 500,000 troops. President Trump, I, I never said that. For, for one minute, I just want to go back to my original question, which yeah. is, are Putin's terms acceptable to you? Keeping the territory no, they're not in acceptable. Ukraine. No, they're not acceptable. But look, this is a war that never should have started. If we had a leader in this war, he led everybody along. He's given $200 billion now or more to Ukraine. He's given $200 billion. That's a lot of money. I don't think there's ever been anything like it. Every time that Zelensky comes to this country, he walks away with $60 billion. He's the greatest salesman ever. And I'm not knocking him. I'm not knocking anything. I'm only saying he's, the money that we're spending on this war, and we shouldn't be spending, it should have never happened. I will have that war settled between Putin and Zelensky 
as president-elect before I take office on January 20th. I'll have that war settled. People being killed so needlessly, so stupidly, and I will get it settled, and I'll get it settled fast before I take office. President you know, Biden, you have a minute. <clears throat> the fact is that Putin is a war criminal. He's killed thousands and thousands of people. And he has made one thing clear. He wants to reestablish what was part of the Soviet empire, not just a peace. He wants all of Ukraine. That's what he wants. And then you think he'll stop there? Do you think he'll stop when he, if he, if he takes Ukraine? What do you think happens to Poland? What do you think of Belarus? What do you think happens to those NATO countries? And so if you want a war, you ought to find out what he's going to do, because if, in fact, he does what he says and walks away, and by the way, all that money we give Ukraine and from weapons we make here in the United States, we give them the weapons, not the money at this point. And, the, and our NATO allies have produced as much funding for Ukraine as we have. That's why, it's, that's why we're strong. Uh, former President Trump, uh, I want to ask you about January 6, 2021. After you rallied your supporters that day, some of them stormed the Capitol to stop the constitutionally mandated counting of electoral votes. As president, you swore an oath to, quote, preserve, protect, and defend, unquote, the Constitution. What do you say to voters who believe that you violated that oath through your actions and inaction on January 6th and worry that you'll do it again? Well, I don't think too many believe that. And let me tell you about January 6th. On January 6th, we had a great border. Nobody coming through, very few. On January 6th, we were energy independent. On January 6th, we had the lowest taxes ever. We had the lowest regulations ever. On January 6th, we were respected all over the world. All over the world, we were respected. And then he comes in, and we're now laughed at. We're like a bunch of stupid people. That What happened to the United States' reputation under this man's leadership is horrible, including weaponization, which I'm sure at some point you'll be talking about, where he goes after his political opponent because he can't beat him fair and square. You have 80 seconds left. My question was, what do you say to those voters who believe that you violated your constitutional oath through your actions and inaction on January 6, 2021, and worry that you'll do it again? Well, I didn't say that to anybody. I said peacefully and patriotically. And Nancy Pelosi, if you just watched the news from two days ago, on tape to her daughter, who's a documentary filmmaker, they say, but she's saying, oh, no, it's my responsibility. I was responsible for this because I offered her 10,000 soldiers or National Guard, and she turned them down. And the mayor of, in writing, by the way, the mayor, in writing, turned it down, the mayor of, of D.C. They turned it down. I offered 10,000 because I could see I had virtually nothing to do. They asked me to go make a speech. I could see what was happening. Everybody was saying they're going to be there on January 6th. They're going to be there. And I said, you know what? There's a lot of people coming. You could feel it. You could feel it, too, and you could feel it. And I said, they ought to have some National Guard or whatever. And I offered it to her. And she now admits that she turned it down. And it was the same day she was, I don't know, she can't be very happy with her daughter because it made her into a liar. She said, I take full responsibility for January 6th. President Biden. Look, he encouraged those folks to go up on Capitol Hill, number one. I sat in the dining room off the Oval Office. He sat there for three hours, three hours watching, begging, being begged by his vice president and a number of his colleagues on the Republican side as well to do something, to call for a stop, to end it. Instead, he talked, they talked about these people being patriots and, and, and great patrons of America. In fact, he says he'll now forgive them for what they've done. He'll, They've been convicted. He says he wants to commute their sentences and say that, that no. But he went to every single court in the nation. I don't know how many cases, scores of cases, including the Supreme Court. And they said, they said, no, no, this guy, this guy is responsible for doing what is being, what was done. He did do a damn thing. And these people should be in jail. And they should be the ones who are being held accountable. And he wants to let them all out. And now he says if he loses again, such a whiner that he is, that it could be a bloodbath. Thank you, President Biden. President Trump? What they've done to some people that are so innocent, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. What you have done, how you've destroyed the lives of so many people. When they ripped down Portland, when they ripped down uh, many other cities, you go to Minnesota, Minneapolis, what they've done there, with the fires all over the city. If I didn't bring in the National Guard, that city would have been destroyed. When you look at all of the 
they took over big chunks of Seattle. I was all set to bring in the National Guard. They heard that. They saw them coming, and they left immediately. What he said about this whole subject is so off. Peacefully patriotic. One other thing. The unselect committee, which is basically two horrible Republicans that are all gone now, out of office, and Democrats, all Democrats, they destroyed and deleted all of the information they found because they found out we were right. We were right. And they deleted and destroyed all of the information. They should go to jail for that. If a Republican did that, they'd go to Thank jail. Thank you, President Trump. President Biden, I want to give you a minute. The only person on this stage is a convicted felon is the man I'm looking at right now. And the fact of the matter is, he isn't, he's, what he's telling you is simply not true. The fact is that there was no effort on his part to stop what was going on up in Capitol Hill. And all those people, every one of those who were convicted, deserves to be convicted. The idea that they didn't kill somebody, just went in and broke down doors, broke the windows, uh, occupied offices, turned over desks, turned them over statues. The idea that those people are patriots? Come on. When I asked them the first of two debates we had, the debates we had the first time around, I said, will you denounce the Proud Boys? He said, no, I'll tell them to stand by. The idea he's refusing, to, will, will you denounce these guys? We denounce the people we're talking about now. We denounce the people who attacked that capital. What are you going to do? I'm going to uh, give you a, a, a minute, President Trump, for a follow-up question I have. Um, after a jury convicted you of 34 felonies last month, you said if reelected, you would, quote, have every right to go after, unquote, your political opponents. You just talked about members of the select committee on January 6th going to jail. Your main political opponent is standing on stage with you tonight. Can you clarify exactly what it means about you feeling you have every right to go after your political opponents? Well, I said my retribution is going to be success. We're going to make this country successful again, because right now it's a failing nation. My retribution is going to be success. But when he talks about a convicted felon, his son is a convicted felon at a very high level. His son is convicted, going to be convicted probably numerous other times. Should have been convicted before, but his Justice Department let the statute of limitations lapse on the most important things. But he could be a convicted felon as soon as he gets out of office. Joe could be a convicted felon with all of the things that he's done. He's done horrible things. All of the death caused at the, the border, uh, telling the Ukrainian people that we're going to want a billion dollars or you change the prosecutor, otherwise you're not getting a billion dollars. If I ever said that, that's quid pro quo, that we're not going to do anything. We're not going to give you a billion dollars unless you change your prosecutor having to do with the son. This man is a criminal. This man, you're lucky. You're lucky. I did nothing wrong. We'd have a system that was rigged and disgusting. I did nothing wrong. Thank you, President Trump. President Biden, you have said, I'm coming right to you, sir. You, well, you want to respond? Go ahead. I'll give you a minute to respond. The idea that I did anything wrong relative to what you're talking about is outrageous. It's simply a lie, number one. Number two, the idea that you have a right to seek retribution against any American just because you're president is wrong. It's simply wrong. No president's ever spoken like that before. No president in our history has spoken like that before. Number three, the crimes that you are still charged with, and think of all the civil penalties you have. How many billions of dollars do you owe in civil penalties for, for molesting a woman in public, for doing a whole range of things, of having sex with a porn star on the night while your wife was pregnant? I mean, what, what, what are you talking about? You, you have the morals of an alley cat. Give me a minute, sir. I didn't have sex with a porn star, number one. Number two, that was a case that was started and moved. They moved a high-ranking official, a DOJ, into the Manhattan DA's office to start that case. That case is going to be appealed and won. We had a very uh, terrible judge, a horrible judge, Democrat. The prosecutor were all high-ranking Democrats, appointed people, and the, both the civil and the criminal. He basically went after his political opponent because he thought it was going to damage me. But when the public found out about these cases, because they understand it better than he does, he has no idea what these cases are. But when, he, the, when they found out about these cases, you know what they did? My poll numbers went up way up. You know that because you're reporting it. 
And we took in more money in the last two weeks than we've ever taken in in the history of, of any campaign. I don't think any campaign has ever taken. Hundreds of millions of dollars came pouring in because the public knows it's a scam and it's a guy that's after his political opponent because he can't win fair and square. Let's Thank turn to concerns that voters have about each of you. President Biden, you would be 86 at the end of your second term. How do you address concerns about your capability to handle the toughest job in the world well into your 80s? Well, first of all, I spent half my career being, being criticized, being the youngest person in politics. I was the second youngest person ever elected to the United States Senate, and now I'm the oldest. This guy's three years younger and a lot less competent. I think that just look at the record, look at what I've done, look how I've turned around the horrible situation he left me. As I said, 50 million new jobs, 800,000 manufacturing jobs, more investment in America, over million, billions of dollars in private investment in, uh, in, in enterprises that we are growing. We, by the way, we brought an awful lot of people, well, uh, the whole idea of computer chips. We used to have 40% of the market. We invented those chips, and we lost it because he was sending people to, cheap, to find the cheapest jobs overseas and to bring home a product. So I went, I went to South Korea. I convinced Samsung to invest billions of dollars here in the United States. And they're, guess what? Those fabs, they call them, to, 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 to build these chips, those fabs pay over $100,000. You don't need a college degree for them. And there's billions, about $40 billion already being invested and being built right now in the United States, creating significant jobs for Americans all over the, from all over the world. President Biden, you have 40 seconds left. Would you like to add anything? Yeah, I would. The, the idea that somehow we are uh, this failing country. I never heard a president talk like this before. We, we're the envy of the world. Like, name me a single major country president who wouldn't trade places with the United States of America for all our problems and all our opportunities. We're the most progressive country in the world in getting things done. We're the strongest country in the world. We're a country in the world who keeps our word, and everybody trusts us, all of our allies, and, our, and, our op, and our, those who he coddles up to, from Kim Jong-un, who he sends love letters to, and Putin, et cetera. They don't want to screw around with us. Thank you. Former President Trump, to follow up, you would be 82 at the end of your second term. What do you say to voters who have concerns about your capabilities to serve? Well, I took two tests, cognitive tests. I aced them, both of them, as you know. It, we made it public. He took none. I'd like to see him take one, just one, a real easy one. Like, go through the first five questions, he couldn't do it. But I took two cognitive tests. I took physical exams every year. And, you know, we knock on wood wherever we may have wood that I'm in very good health. I just won two club championships, not even senior, two regular club championships. To do that, you have to be quite smart and you have to be able to hit the ball a long way. And I do it. He doesn't do it. He can't hit a ball 50 yards. He challenged me to a golf match. He can't hit a ball 50 yards. Uh, I think I'm in very good shape. I feel that I'm as in good a shape as I was 25, 30 years ago. Actually, I'm probably a little bit lighter. But I'm in as good a shape as I was uh, years ago. I feel very good. I feel the same. But I took — I was willing to take a cognitive test. And you know what? If I didn't do well, I aced him. Dr. Ronnie Jackson, who's a great guy when he was White House doctor. And then I took another one, a similar one. And both — one of them said they've never seen anybody ace him. Thank you. President Biden? You can see he is six foot five and only 223 pounds, or 235 pounds. Well, you said six four, 200. Well, anyway, that's it. You're, anyway, just take a look at what he says he is and take a look at what he is. Look, I'd be happy to have a driving contest with him. I got my handicap, which when I was vice president, down to a six. And, and by the way, I told you before, I'm happy to play golf if you carry your own bag. Think you can do it? What's the biggest lie that he's a six handicap of all? I was an eight handicap. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. But I have, you know how many? How, I've seen you swing. I know you swing. Hey, let's let's, you let's know, not act like children. President Trump, we're going to turn. Let's around. not act like children. You to a, a specific concern that voters have about you. Will you pledge tonight that once all legal challenges have been exhausted, that you will accept the results of this election, regardless of who wins, and you will say right now that political violence in any form is unacceptable? 
Well, I shouldn't have to say that, but of course I believe that. It's totally unacceptable. And if you would see my statements that I made on Twitter at the time, and also my statement that I made in the Rose Guard, you would say it's one of the strongest statements you've ever seen. In addition to the speech I made, in front of, I believe, the largest crowd I've ever spoken to, and I will tell you, nobody ever talks about that. They talk about a relatively small number of people that went to the Capitol, and in many cases were ushered in by the police. And as Nancy Pelosi said, it was her responsibility, not mine. She said that loud and clear. But the answer is, uh, if the election is fair, free, and I want that more than anybody, and I'll tell you something. I wish he was a great president, because I wouldn't be here right now. I'd be at one of my many places enjoying myself. I wouldn't be under indictment, because I wouldn't have been his political appointment, you know, opponent, because he indicted me because I was his opponent. I wish he was a great president. I would rather have that. I wouldn't be here. I don't mind being here. But the only reason I'm here is he's so bad as a president that I'm going to make America great again. We're going to make America great again. We're a failing nation right now. We're a seriously failing nation. And we're a failing nation because of him. His policies are so bad. Uh, his military policies are uh, insane. They're insane. These are wars that will never end with him. He will drive us into World War III. And we're closer to World War III than anybody can imagine. We are very, very close to World War III, and he's driving us there. And Kim Jong-un and uh, President Xi of China, Kim Jong-un of North Korea, uh, all of these, Putin, they don't respect him. They don't fear him. They have nothing going with this gentleman, and he's going to drive us into World War III. You want a World War III, let him follow and win, and let Putin say, do what you want, NATO. Just do what you want. There's a thing called Article 5. An attack on one is an attack on all, a required response. The idea, the idea, I can't think of a single major leader in the world who wouldn't trade places with the job I've done and what they've done. Because we are a powerful nation. We have wonderful peace. Because of the people, not me. It's because of the American people. They're capable of anything, and they step up when they're needed. And right now, we're needed. We're needed to protect the world because our own safety is at stake. And again, you want to have a war, just let Putin go ahead and take Kyiv, make sure they move on, see what happens in Poland, Hungary, and other places along that border. Then you have a war. President Trump, as I come back to you for a follow-up, the question was, will you accept the results of this election, regardless of who wins? Just to finish what he said, if I might, uh, Russia, they took a lot of land from Bush. They took a lot of land from Obama and Biden. They took no land, nothing from Trump, nothing. He knew not to do it. He's not going to play games with me. He knew that. I got along with him very well, but he knew not to play games. He took nothing from me. But now he's going to take the whole thing from this man right here. That's a war that should have never started. It would have never started ever with me. And he's going to take Ukraine. And, you know, you asked me a question before, would you do this with — he's got us in such a bad position right now with — with Ukraine and Russia, because Ukraine's not winning that war. He said, I will never settle until such time. They're running out of people. They're running out of soldiers. They've lost so many people. It's so sad. They've lost so many people, and they've lost those gorgeous cities with the golden domes that are a thousand years old, all because of him and stupid decisions. Russia would have never attacked. If President I were president. Trump, the question was, will you accept the results of the election, regardless of who wins? Yes or no, please. If it's a fair and legal and good election, absolutely. I would have much rather accepted these, but the, the fraud and everything else was ridiculous. And if you want, we'll have a news conference on it in a week, or we'll have another one of these on a, in a week. But I will absolutely, there's nothing I'd rather do. It would be much easier for me to do that than I'm running again. I wasn't really going to run until I saw the horrible job he did. He's destroying our country. I would be very happy to be someplace else, in a nice location someplace. And again, no indictments, no political opponent stuff, because it's the only way he thinks he can win. But unfortunately, it's driven up my numbers and driven them up to a very high level, because the people understand it. Well, let's see what your numbers are when this election is over. Let's see. Let's see. You're a whiner. When you lost the first time, 
you, you continued, you appealed and appealed to courts all across the country. Not one single court in America said any of your claims had any merit, state or local, none. But you continue to provoke this lie about somehow there's all this misrepresentation, all this stealing. There is no evidence of that at all. And I tell you what, I doubt whether you'll accept it because you're such a whiner. The idea if you lose again, you accepting anything, you can't stand the loss. Something snapped in you when you lost the last time. We'll be right